Big news today, guys. Jamie Dimon potentially going to be retiring a lot sooner than what was originally expected, causing JP Morgan to sell off one of the bigger intraday sell offs here, 4.5% to the downside. My name is Hamilton. I'm here with the Trade Initiative. Let's talk about today wrapping up May 20th, 2024. Even though JP Morgan and thus a majority of financial names as well pulled back today, the overall market actually ended green. The S&P 500 up 0.12, pressing into an all-time high today, and the queues led by tech up 0.7% into an all-time high as well. Bright spot on the day was this XLK sector tech. It did hit our original price target after the breakout way back in, uh, let's say, November, middle of November here, it hit our first price target. We were expecting tech to show some sort of consolidation or uh, some resistance up here, but we expect actually now we're moving the goalposts because we already went through some consolidation here from March through April. So we think we're just going to blast right through this 215 area. This was really led by strength in semiconductors with an all-time high close today. NVIDIA reports after hours on Wednesday. So all eyes are on NVIDIA, but semiconductors, at least in the short term here, acting very, very well as a leadership role once again. And that's what we would expect in a second year bull market. This was the leading industry group last year. Why would it also not be a leading industry group this year? That's something to keep in mind. Industry groups tend to lead for an extended period of time. Once again, though, JP Morgan was kind of the big name here that sold off. Uh, JP, uh, not JP Morgan, uh, Jamie Dimon originally had like a five-year window for retirement and said that he's possibly thinking about retiring sooner than that. It caused the market to sell off JP Morgan and then a pretty steady drip of selling pressure all day. It did cause a majority of the banks to also pull back just based off of ETFs. You know how this thing goes. When the biggest stock within the ETF starts to sell off, it tends to hit the rest of the ETF, or rest of the stocks within the ETF, excuse me. So a bunch of these positions that you see that we're currently in right now, we're in Goldman Sachs. You can see the entry there. We're in American Express. You can see the entry and the addition here. These are generally pretty good wins for us. Some of them are big wins. And so this JP Morgan pullback hasn't necessarily hurt a lot of the profits, but obviously I'm going to call it out because we are long banks right now. And that is the leading name, right? JP Morgan is the largest financial stock within the space. And so if this continues to show potential weakness, that could spell further drawdowns in positions that we're in. And since we're up on these positions, we want to protect capital. So we'll be making those decisions later this week. One thing I want to point out though, is if you're not already Subscribe to the newsletter. I'm going to show you what we sent out earlier this morning, 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Every single morning, I send out a free newsletter. It's usually filled with my ideas on the market for the day, a daily scanner, and a final word. Today's, as always on Monday, we start off with a weekly trend. And what I want to focus on here really quick, and once again, if you're not on the newsletter, I encourage you to sign up. Link is in the description below. It's completely free, guys. As of this morning, every Monday, we look at short-term, intermediate, and long-term trends on the three most important major market indexes, SPY, the Qs, and the Russell 2K IWM. Our goal is to only focus on what's actually happening in the market. We want to remove all bias and all opinion from what's going on, and we want to start every Monday with what is actually happening, not what do we expect is happening, but where are we in relation to short-term, intermediate-term, and long-term trends. And if you're already on the newsletter, you got this uh, weekly trend update last Monday. It's been a consistent, bullish trend over the last two to three weeks, right? We see short-term trends flipping back into bull territory last week. We continue to see that because last week was great. Intermediate-term trends, I would expect if this week is anything like last week, we're also going to flip bull. And then at that point, we have full bull across the board. And I think that's incredibly important because there's always a million things to worry about. Geopolitics, debt, inflation, NVIDIA earnings on Wednesday. But when we can just focus on one thing and one thing alone and really let that thing kind of drive where our attention goes. And if you're following our content, you know that ours is price. It allows you to view the market a lot clearer. You can remove a lot of the noise, maybe stuff that doesn't necessarily matter a whole lot. You can focus on what matters most. And once again, for us, that's price, right? So this was a free newsletter that went out. And I just want to point out here that weekly trends are telling us that the market has an overwhelmingly uh, high probability that we're going to keep going up. Regardless of what anybody expects or you know what they want to happen, the market is clearly telling us that short-term, intermediate-term, and long-term trends are up. And I want to point out here that um, you know, gold and silver breaking out, silver breaking out into a four-year high, gold breaking out into an all-time high. We have positions now in both of these. Gold, we bought back at the 191 pivot, and we added in late last week. Silver, we just started late last week and this morning. And then you can see equal weighted S&P 500 and NASDAQ, both telling us right now that the market looks fantastic. I know that sucks to hear for two camps in particular, people that expect the market or want the market to break down into new lows because they're looking at all of these different factors that might they think will influence the market but aren't, and they feel like they're being cheated. And then the other camp, which is, shit, I missed the pivot. Now I'm chasing, and that's a disadvantageous way to play a breakout. And I agree with you. It is disadvantage. 
to chase breakouts. So find areas of the market that are currently breaking out, not chasing the breakout, right? And there's plenty out there. As a matter of fact, earlier this morning, if we go back to premium newsletter, I also put out a daily scan. This is part of it as well. You can see uh, I'm not going to tell you the actual trade ideas that we put on here, but you can see the scan that we utilize every Monday. It's the heavy hitters report. This is where we look at the most, the strongest stocks that are domestic to the United States. You can see the types of stocks that we're looking at here. Google, Walmart, FCX, JP Morgan, stuff that we're already currently in. You've heard me talk about it on YouTube before, but this is a great list to kind of ground yourself. So take the weekly trend, see where we're at. Where are we in short term, intermediate term, and long term trends, and then go through the heavy hitters report. These are the strongest and largest stocks that are uh, domestic to the United States, right? Very hard to go wrong with any of these. Go through this list that I send out every Monday and find the setups that you think you can take advantage of and own them. We're in the second year of a bull market. These are generally a list of very, very strong stocks. We filter them through by percentage of 52-week highs, and you can see that a lot of these Google's at all-time highs today. We have a position in Google. FCX is at decade highs. We have a position in FCX. JP Morgan, all-time highs up until today's pullback. We're in a position there. Charles Schwab, we're in a position. Goldman Sachs, we're in a position. Bank of America, American Express. We're just thinking about opening up S. So PG, we're in a position. Citigroup, we're in a position. Uh, Dell, we're in a position. Qcom, we're in a position. Costco, we're looking at getting into a position. You see what we're talking about here, right? We want to own the strongest stocks in the market as long as the market is telling us that it's time to own the strongest stocks. As of right now, I don't know about you guys, but higher highs with a little bit of bullish momentum behind it definitely screams to me that it's time to own some strong stocks, guys. If you like this type of content, please like and subscribe. Leave a comment below. Do you think that we're going to continue to press here? Do you think the short-term, intermediate-term, and long-term trends are going to continue to go up? Or is there something else cooking in the background? Is NVIDIA going to send us down into new lows and break that short-term trend bullishness? Let me know in the comments. Catch you tomorrow.